share my time with uh, Deputy Kenny. It's agreed. And if you just tell me when I have two minutes. Uh, thanks, Les Can. Thank you. Uh, I attended, uh, Minister, I attended a packed meeting of a very anxious and upset Priory Hall residents uh, in the Hilton Airport Hotel, Malahide Road, last Thursday night. Priory Hall is a relatively new residential apartment complex of 187 units built by the Coalport Company in the huge new North Fr uh, Fringe District in Dublin North East, with residents comprising of owner occupiers, private tenants, city council and RAS tenants, and citizens who brought through affordable housing schemes. Within months of the first residents moving in, Las Cancorla, serious complaints were made about defects in safety issues at Priory Hall. The Dublin Ch uh, City Fire Safety Chief described the north and south blocks of the, of the complex, quote, a potentially dangerous building, and stated that remedial works were urgently necessary to address this appalling safety deficit. In December 2009, Minister, Dublin City Council moved out their own tenants and clients on safety grounds and commissioned a report by Hayes Higgins Partnership on the alleged serious fire safety defects in the residential units in the complex which DCC, Dublin City Council, owns. On July 27th last, the City uh, Council Housing and Planning Departments made a presentation uh, on the Hayes Higgins report to myself, Deputy uh, Sean Kenny, uh, Councillor Brian McDowell and other local reps. Uh, to say that we all left the meeting uh, profoundly shocked, Las Cancorl, indeed stunned, would be an understatement. We all undertook to have residents immediately informed of the appalling litany of structural, electrical and gas safety defects in the DCC units of the complex and we all urged Dublin City Council to immediately inform private owners and renters if ne and if necessary Laskin Corla to evacuate the building. Uh, at last Thursday, uh, uh, Thursday's meeting Dublin City Council senior housing officials including Assistant City Manager Mr Dick Grady and his DCC colleagues outlined key findings of the report which residents asked would be immediately uh, uh, published. Of residents at that recent meeting urgently and directly asked DCC officials uh, whether it was safe for them and their families to return home, to spend war one more night uh, in this complex. And that's the question I want to ask you uh, tonight, Minister, uh, on their behalf. Uh, they also want to know what action has been taken about the architects, uh, about the whole self-certification process, uh, the people who allegedly signed off on safety standards in the building, uh, and, and indeed about self-certification generally. Uh, so, uh, uh, Minister, this is a a very urgent, uh, profoundly serious matter, uh, on which I hope you'll be able to give us some support tonight. Thank Good morning, Deputy, Deputy Sean Kenny. Um, thank you, uh, Last Cancorla, and I want to add to the comments already made by my colleague. And I, I call uh, for the immediate, uh, immediately for the release of the Dublin City Council commissioned Hayes Higgins Consultant Engineers Report to all the apartment owners in Primary Hall. So far, Dublin City Council has refused to provide this based on their own legal advice. I would request that the Minister and Dublin City Council advise owners, and particularly owner-occupiers, who have to honour monthly mortgage commitments if suitable alternative accommodation will be provided for them if further defects are identified when the final report is received, bearing in mind that residents who have to vacate their homes based on the findings of the final report in an emergency will require immediate accommodation and taking a place on a housing list will really not be an option. I'm calling on Dublin City Council to take a civil action against Coalport Building Company Limited and or the architects who certify the, the development in accordance with the building regulations uh, and that this action should not be taken solely to protect Dublin City Council's own interests. From a cost point of view, it would make better sense if the homeowners who are not in a position to obtain legal advice due to their current financial circumstances could join with the City Council in taking that action. I would ask the Minister who, if anybody, will undertake the repairs of the, of the developed, development buildings if they are deemed to be repairable in a scenario where Coalport Building Company Limited have not, to date it would appear, and will not attend to the repairs of the building. The residents of Primary Priory Hall have now reached a, a crisis point, and the dilemma they find themselves in is whether to default on their mortgages, thereby rendering themselves unable to obtain credit for future um, things such as a family home for the rest of their lives are to continue to live in a building that is unsafe as a result of non-compliance with fire safety regulations, defective gas insulations, defective electrical insulations and defective construction. Many of the owner occupiers are struggling financially are unable to obtain comprehensive legal advice while some residents have received preliminary legal advice most cannot afford to instruct a solicitor. Some I best deputy to conclude his remarks, please. Okay. Some, just one, just, uh, some solicitors who have been approached are unwilling to take a case against building company, Coalport, 
and or Thomas McFeely, as in previous litigations, Mr McFeely has not paid compensation to plaintiffs and has a number of judgments against him personally, most notably a judgment by the ACC Bank for £6.2 million. Thank you, Lachlan Corder. Can I say, first of all, I take this on behalf of Minister Penrose, who is part scheduled um, in, in the Shannon. And I thank Deputy Bruin and, and Deputy Kenny uh, for their contributions. And I note, and I will bring to his personal attention, the deep, obviously, concerns that you and your community and electorate have. As the deputies will be aware, Dublin City Council has initiated legal proceedings in relation to compliance with planning permission and fire safety regulations in relation to the development of Priory Hall. The enforcement proceedings are still before the court. The building regulations set out the legal requirements for the design and construction of new buildings, including houses, extensions and material alterations, and certain changes of use of existing buildings. The related technical guidance documents provide technical guidance on how to comply with the regulations. Compliance with the regulations is the responsibility of the owner or builder of a building. Enforcement of the regulations is the responsibility of the 37 local building control authorities and in the case of Priory Hall, responsibility rests with Dublin City Council who are empowered to carry out inspections and initiate enforcement proceedings when considered necessary. It is understood that Dublin City Council is continuing to actively investigate possible non-compliance with the requirements of the Building Control Acts in relation to this development. Where building defects occur, the remediation is a matter for the parties concerned, namely the building owner, the relevant developer and the building's insurers in line with any contractual arrangements agreed between the parties. In addition, the Council, as a property owner in Priory Hall, commissioned the building survey in conjunction with a number of other property owners in the complex who agreed to participate in the survey on a fee-paying basis. The report has recently been submitted to the Council and copies forwarded to those owners who participated in the survey. Uh, the question of further publication or dissemination of the report does not therefore arise. Any further action in relation to the issues which have arisen in regard to this development would be a matter for Dublin City Council to deal with as, an, as appropriate in line with the standard arrangements in place for the discharge of the statutory functions. The Minister has no specific function in relation to the investigation and prosecution of offences under the Building Control Acts. No, very brief. Uh, thanks, Les Cannon. Just, just tell me when there's a minute has expired. Uh, just say again, Minister, that uh, these residents, 200 families, I mean, they, fe they feel deeply let down by the regulatory system, the planning system, the building control system, the fire safety system, uh, the fact that uh, people were allowed to self-certify a grossly um, uh, badly constructed uh, set of buildings, uh, which uh, are, are perhaps frankly dangerous. Uh, and, and we need to move, I think, to reassure them. And I would come back to the original question I posed. Uh, would you have a concern as a, as a, 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 a well, certainly as a the part of the environment, that people could be in danger tonight or the nights from now on in relation to these set of buildings. What can be done urgently, uh, if necessary, uh, to condemn buildings which are unfit for purpose? I, I would ask you, I, I commend the Minister for the Environment for setting up the working group on the pyrites, uh, pyrites uh, infected buildings. It was a good move. It was the start of something that I'd called for for the last about five or six years myself, or since whenever the crisis started. Could something similar be done in relation to Priory Hall, uh, whereby the department might assist Dublin City Council uh, you know, to lead a set of actions uh, to make the building safe, to reassure these citizens, to rehouse them if necessary. Uh, thanks, Ken. Deputy Kinney. Yeah, uh, thank you, Les Cancola. I think th this um, case here at Priory Hall points, out, points up that the, the, the building control regulations, particularly the self-certification process, is clearly not working. This was and this became clear during the, during the building boom when you had light touch regulation, and we're now seeing the effects of where basic uh, safety uh, compliance, like uh, installing gas uh, connections without an isolation handle to switch off the gas in the event of a fire, they are not provided. Uh, things like simply like earthing, uh, the earthing of the electrical installations, not earthed. Um, if there was a fire, there, there could be very serious consequences. I think the, the, the entire building control regulations should be put on a statutory basis. I think the legislation setting them up provides for that, but because of, of some difficulties that arose uh, initially, they were put onto a self-certification basis. I think clearly that doesn't work, uh, as we've seen in other fields. And I think, uh, Minister, we, we should look at putting them on a proper statutory basis. Come on, Mr. Uh, again, I'd like to assure Deputy Bruin and Deputy Kennedy that I will take 
I take what you say very seriously and I bring to the attention of Minister Penrose and I know that he will obviously be deeply concerned at, at, the, you know, at the manner in which this has been done in this particular state. As indicated earlier, the remediation of the defects is a matter for the parties concerned, namely the building owner, the relevant developer, the builder's insurers, in line with any contractual arrangements. In relation to the prosecution of alleged non-compliance with planning permission, fire safety regulations and building regulations, it is appropriate that Dublin City Council be allowed to deal with the situation in line with the standard arrangements in place for the discharge of their statutory functions. Since taking up office, the Minister for Environment has clearly signalled that consumer protection in the area of quality construction of new dwellings is a priority matter, and he has taken a number of steps, including the following, to strengthen the situation. The introduction of mandatory certificates of compliance by builders and designers of buildings, demonstrating that the statutory requirements of the building regulations have been met. More efficient pooling of building control staff and resources across the local authority sector to ensure more effective and meaningful oversight of building activity. Standardised approaches and common protocols to ensure nationwide consistency in the administration of building control functions. And finally, measures for the support and further development of the building control functions nationwide. The Minister is determined to strengthen the building control system so as to ensure that problems like those that have arisen at Priory Hall do not visit homeowners again.